Hi, welcome to Flywheel Fridays, keeping up with the federal IT news cycle, one conversation at a time. I'm Alexander Bulova, media producer for GovCIO Media and Research. With me today are my wonderful co-hosts, senior researchers, Kate Macri and Melissa Harris. Melissa and Kate, welcome to the show. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Alex. We are back from our summer break to recap Women Tech Leaders, our second in-person event of the year, which was held on July 14th at the International Spy Museum. Women from across government joined us to discuss topics such as diversity, recruitment, artificial intelligence, equity, data management, and more. To kick off our discussion, Kate and Melissa, what was it like to hear from so many of the most prominent women in federal technology? It was great, first of all. I think that we had a really diverse panel of speakers, not just because they were women, but from across various agencies, from the military to civilian agencies, talking about data, the workforce, and cyber. So hearing all their insights from their different perspectives in a room full of women, like, was just really great. The energy was great. And um, it's, I think, one of the better events I've gone to in a very long time. And I'm not just saying that because it was one of our events. It was just great. I really enjoyed chatting with all of my panelists. They were all very personable and down to earth and really knew their stuff and were very good at, I don't know, I guess I would say it was really cool to chat with some of these women who are in pretty significant positions of power in their respective organizations and them, you know, treating me like an equal and everyone that they talk to that way. And also just being very encouraging and inspiring with regards to my own career, which was really cool. So I would say that was definitely a highlight for me. I would agree with that. I felt like my panelists treated me as an equal. Normally it can be a little bit intimidating especially when there are a lot of men in the room and you have a panel full of men. I feel like I have to be a little bit more on my toes. And I felt incredibly comfortable both working with my panel and presenting in front of the audience. We began our event with opening remarks by Robin Carnahan, followed by a fireside chat with leaders from CISA and CMS. Kate, how did these panels set the tone for the rest of the event? I feel like the fireside chat with Valerie Cofield, who's the chief of strategy policy and plans at CISA, and Andrea Fletcher, who is the director of digital service at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, really set the tone for the whole day by focusing the conversation on what they are doing in leadership positions to help solve some pretty big challenges across government. Uh, This was very cyber focused, but I think the theme carried over into the non cyber panels. I I don't think that really had a whole lot to do with it. I really liked how that panel focused very much on like the tangible work that they're actually doing right now, as opposed to just like, you know, I'm a woman in a leadership position. Yay me. It was more just like, yes, you're a woman in a leadership position, and let's talk about like what you're actually doing and how you're actually leading and what that looks like and how you're making a real difference in government. And I really liked that approach to that fireside chat, and I thought it really set the tone for the whole event for being like, we're not here to just be like, yay, women, we're here to learn from women who are making a real difference in government. I agree. And I got to listen to Robin Carnahan's opening remarks. She talked about customer experience in terms of creating an environment that works well for all people, women and otherwise, um, and how she was really backing that through the Technology Modernization Fund, or TMF. Recently, there was an announcement from the White House and GSA that there will be more customer experience investments through TMF. And also um, the customer experience is a key part of the president's management agenda. Um, So she was highlighting how, as she said, the president knows that people come first 
And along those lines, she also highlighted that it's important to create a work environment that supports women in tech and highlighted that it's important to mentor women. And Val from CISA also talked about that in her fireside chat. She said that, you know, it could be hard to not only be a woman in a position like hers, but also a person of color. And she said it could be difficult to enter a room where there's no one like her, which I think a lot of women can relate to. So she highlighted that it's important to have that kind of mentorship to do the work that Kate was mentioning just now. Our first panel was titled Human Capital Management in a Diverse, Equitable, Inclusive Future. Melissa, how did this panel expand on some of the themes of the previous conversation? Well, the Department of Veterans Affairs um, Electronic Health Record Modernization Integration Office Acting Deputy CIO, Laura Pratula, sort of mentioned that. She highlighted how women in the IT workforce sort of had a very different role. Ten years ago, they were sort of just emerging in those kinds of roles more so, and there was a lot of a lot more inequity in terms of salary. So she was arguing that we're in a different place today. It's a competitive market, and in many ways, you don't want to carry that salary history with you moving forward. She highlighted that you should really argue for what you're worth, negotiate your value, you know, think about what you bring to the table and advocate for yourself. So piggybacking off of what Laura said, Liza Zampt from the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission highlighted a report that her office released on Wednesday that found that women accounted for 29% of the STEM federal workforce. But out of all federal leadership roles, 20, only 25% of all STEM leaders were women. And so she was talking about how some of these disparities also have to do with pay gaps, not only the sort of mothering tax as we commonly hear about, but Women in the private sector make less when they leave school compared to men often, and that can kind of be perpetuated in the federal government. So she was highlighting how federal agencies need to do more work around like examining salary equity, DEI and work, um, doing surveys and acting on it in meaningful ways. And that, you know, when people decide to leave, through exit interviews, it's important for agencies to really understand problems and try to give and try to enhance women's experiences in STEM positions. Following that panel was a discussion on leveraging data to promote equity. Melissa, who were the speakers on this panel? I had a pretty diverse group of women on my panel. We had Sharnetta Sams, who is the CTO of Army DevCom, Katie Savage, the Deputy Chief Digital and Artificial Officer at DOD. We also had the Associate Director of Scientific Programs from VA's Million Veteran Program, Jennifer Moser, and an industry panelist who is Rebecca Boyles, the Director of RTI International Center for Data Modernization Solutions. On the panel, we talked about a lot of different things. They talked about the work they're doing with data, about democratizing data for use, especially on the medical side with VA's MVP. Jennifer Moser talked about how they're looking to maintain security of sensitive medical information, but also trying to make it accessible and usable to make a difference for veterans using data that veterans provide to make discoveries about medical specific issues for vets. But we also talked about infrastructure like the cloud, using the cloud to better leverage data also the workforce, making sure that we can get to trustworthy AI and collecting and uh, tagging data in a way that's representative of all people. So they advocated for having different people in the room 
diverse teams so that you know you can prevent bias in data that's used for AI automation. Our last panel shifted focus to the role of women in cyber defense, with speakers from DOD, FBI, Air Force, and more. Kate, what were some of your main takeaways from the discussion? I really enjoyed this panel because I thought each of the panelists had really great anecdotes and unique perspectives on their journey to cyber leadership positions across government. So our panelists were Dr. Kelly Fletcher, who is the principal deputy CIO at DOD. She is the primary advisor for cyber and IT policy to the Secretary of Defense, which is pretty cool. Then we had Cynthia Kaiser, who is a cyber division section chief with the FBI. She primarily focuses on election security, also very cool. And then we had Lieutenant General Mary O'Brien, who was recently confirmed to the CIO position for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, which is a very important position, which is very cool. Basically, all of them were very cool. And she's currently Deputy Chief of Staff for ISR and Cyber Effects Operations at the Air Force where she basically oversees and leads ISR and cyber policy for the entire Air Force, which is very cool. <laughs> and then our last panelist was Denise Sisson, who is a VP of Arkham Sales at ID Technologies. And she's had a long career in cyber and technology and brought a lot of really valuable industry experience to the table, which was also pretty neat to hear about. So. My main takeaways really were really kind of draw from literally like verbatim some of the things that they said. So Lieutenant General Mary O'Brien said, intellectually curious leaders stay relevant, which I thought was such a great takeaway because I felt like that really kind of encapsulated the whole panel because each one of the women on that panel, when they talked about their story, they talked about how they had to problem solve and learn to stay open-minded and find solutions in order to either get the jobs that they had or to rise into leadership positions once they were in the organizations that they were in. You know, like Mary O'Brien talked a lot about how, you know, she had to balance being a working mom basically while her husband was also deployed. And she still managed to rise in the ranks at DOD, and she's in like a very senior position now, and she's about to take on like one of the biggest, like most important jobs in J6 as CIO, which is like very big deal. And that to me is just like really, really impressive. Like this is a woman who has managed to like basically raise her kids herself while her husband has been overseas for long stretches of time while also continuing to advance her career. And I like how she and several of the other panelists like Cynthia Kaiser and Kelly Fletcher especially said that it's kind of a false choice that you have to choose between being a mother and having a very successful career. And I feel like that's something that holds a lot of women back and they feel like they can't do it. And to be fair, there are lots of companies that are not conducive to being a mother and also like moving up in the company. And that's a really big problem, but it's also not easy. Like even if you do have the support of whatever organization you're working for, like it's always going to be hard. And all of these women were definitely a testament to just a lot of grit and hard work and they really know their stuff. And they were very encouraging and talked a lot about the different ways that they're trying to inspire women to get involved. I mean, Cynthia talked about how she's a Girl Scout uh, troop leader and she has a daughter and she spends a lot of time with these little girls trying to inspire them to pursue their dreams and, you know, talk to them about cyber careers because she's in a cyber career and it's really awesome. We need more women in cyber. So I thought that was a really great anecdote as well because it was really just connecting the dots between just like, we need more women in cyber, like how can we do this to like, here's a tangible example of how 
I made this work in my life and how I'm trying to help other people follow in my footsteps. And I thought it was a really good panel because of that, because sometimes panels can be like very high level and very like nebulous in terms of the concepts they're ta- that they're talking about. And all of these women have very like concrete, specific examples and anecdotes to share. And I think that really was, I think that really drove the point home. I do think that the anecdotes were wonderful because it humanizes us. I think it's easy to sort of talk about how hybrid work or remote work is really wonderful or, you know, the IT behind it It can get technical, but hearing the human side behind things like in my panel, they were talking about how their moms and how you have these responsibilities and you have these challenges that, you know, are difficult as women. And I think that getting that human side to these discussions, even though we're talking about how, you know, these women are contributing to their missions. I think that to be able to connect and understand and have empathy with each other is a wonderful aspect to this event and is a part that I really enjoyed. If you missed yesterday's event, all panels will be available to watch on our website. Our next event, Blueprints of Tomorrow, is coming up in two weeks, so make sure to register for that on our website. Until then, that's all for today's Flywheel Fridays. If you enjoyed this episode, keep the conversation turning by subscribing and leaving a review on the podcast platform of your choice. I'm Alexander Bolova. I'm Melissa Harris. And I'm Kate Macri. Thank you for listening. Flywheel Fridays along with GovCast, HealthCast, and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released weekly across our shows. You can follow all of them in your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at govcio.com.